We'll now hear from Jose Luis Molina, who is the boss of Hispatech, uh, to talk to us about technology and the impact that technology can have in, uh, in, in this whole area of uh, sustainability. Jose Luis, over to you. Hello, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are uh, based. Uh, to attend to this interesting uh, event of Global uh, Citrix Congress. Uh, my name is Jose Luis Molina, and I'm the chairman and CEO of Hispatech Group. And in the next minutes, I'm going to talk to you about digital technology for a better fruit supply and quality. First of all, uh, just to explain briefly, what do we do in our company? So our mission is creating and supplying the best digital solutions uh, with, a, with a focus in the farm to market uh, space, uh, covering all the processes for companies and their agronomists and farmers uh, working in the same ecosystem in the specialty crops segment, obviously including the Citrix uh, segment. Uh, we've been in the market for more than 30 years. Uh, we are more than 150 professionals, so mainly uh, mathematicians, agronomists, computer science, uh, telecommunications engineers or industrial engineers or uh, economics degrees. Um, we work as of today for more than 500 companies or cooperatives and their ecosystems of uh, farmers and agronomists, uh, mainly in Iberia, Spain and Portugal, uh, and in mm, some countries in Latin America, uh, like uh, Peru, Mexico, Chile, but as well in places like uh, Brazil, like Morocco, like South Africa, or like Colombia. We are facing a good number of societal challenges, uh, and then we have a good number of quality requirements that with using uh, digitalization and digital tools, uh, we are capable to face in a much more solid way than up to this moment. Uh, basically, we are facing right now the farm to fork strategy in the case of the European Union that is uh, affecting to all the production uh, happening in the European Union but uh, probably will affect as well to the imports from uh, some other areas. We are facing, or we, we need to um, target uh, the sustainable development goals that were fixed in the year uh, 2015. And uh, those uh, 17 uh, sustainable development goals are impacting to all of us in our production, uh, transformation and commercialization activities. And we have uh, very uh, demanding, I would say, uh, quality standards like BRC, Global Gap, Organic, IFS, or, or some others that uh, more and more are uh, becoming uh, demanding and are becoming uh, ambitious. And we are facing as well uh, higher demand from the consumer side of higher quality, more information, more accuracy, uh, on whatever kind of attributes that are linked to the product. From the point of view of uh, the processes that are very important to cover and targeting uh, in, the, in the farm production, transformation, distribution, so we are covering in our company uh, field production processes like preparing land, planting, field tasks, or plant health, nutrition, or, or irrigation, harvesting, whatever. Uh, we are targeting and we are working as well uh, intensively in transformation processes. So in the post-harvest space, uh, basically in product reception, weighing, sorting, storage, quality, packing, or uh, in the area of commercialization processes, where uh, most of our customers are working with sales programs, uh, selling to big distribution or retail uh, chains in the trading area, in the repenning area, in logistics, in storage, in economics. So obviously controlling and measuring cost all over the chain. Uh, in all of those processes, traceability, quality and food safety are absolutely key. And not only from the point of view of operational processes, but as well from the point of view of decisional 
and uh, operational, tactical, and strategic decisions. So we need to take a good number of decisions all over the, the chain, all over the process, in terms of uh, choosing, which is our mix of varieties, what kind of field operations do we have to do, when, how, uh, when, where, so, uh, how many resources should we uh, devote uh, to those uh, goals, uh, and what kind of, uh, how much uh, kilograms quality, when will we produce, then in the transformation area, so we are uh, answering questions like how many kilograms are we receiving, what kind of varieties, quality, uh, how much and, and, and when packing, uh, how many resources will be required. And obviously, uh, probably the most important part in the, in, in the fruit sector, so where, when, and to whom selling, in, under which conditions and which price, how to distribute. So we need to uh, be answering continuously uh, questions related with environmental sustainability, social sustainability, and economic sustainability that are the three bases that are maintaining our businesses, our activity in the best way. Um, talking about uh, the full support, uh, the full process support uh, in both in pre and post harvest. So the kind of things that we do uh, are related with uh, satellite or drone images processing, with uh, sensors, uh, data capture, with images uh, capture and processing in the field, capturing data as well with uh, apps from the machinery or uh, capturing data or sending instructions to uh, irrigation machines or to machinery moving through the field. Then as well in the warehouse part, so we are managing uh, videos, pictures, just to recognize people, just to improve uh, the quality control of fruits, uh, just to measure the weight of every single box that is being managed in the warehouse. Well, quite a lot of areas where we have, we need touch points uh, to control the full process. Regarding analytics value proposition, uh, we are uh, working uh, both in descriptive analytics, so what's happening, uh, in diagnostic analytics, so why is happening, uh, in the predictive analytics, so what will happen, and then uh, I would say the higher maturity level uh, linked to prescriptive analytics, so which will be the best option, the best action next. In the pre-harvest uh, operational intelligence, I'm going to show just some examples, very basic examples on the crop monitoring uh, space, harvest calendar, uh, resource optimization or farm to market uh, profitability analysis. So as a whole cycle where we can see a good number of KPIs and variables that have to be monitored all over the, the process of the pre-harvest process. In the tactical planning, uh, decisional intelligence, so I'm going to show as well some examples of screens of the kind of things that we can do in the crop monitoring uh, space using IoT, climate, satellite, uh, or drones, in the yield and quality predictions, uh, or uh, choosing the optimal date for pruning or for harvesting, uh, in the short-term forecast, uh, talking about two to 10, 12 weeks ahead, or in the long-term forecast for the full campaign, what is quite relevant and quite important, especially in the Citrix space. Obviously, in all of these cases, using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, models. In the space of monitoring and benchmarking of farms and plots, uh, that's one of our preferred tools and methodologies that is using the benchmarking uh, as a, an improvement method. Uh, we are measuring uh, the resource utilization, so machinery, water, pesticides, or warehouse uh, square meters. Uh, we're measuring as well the profitability analysis uh, as a full cycle, so from the field and up to the consumer. 
uh, using the benchmarking, so which are the best plots, the best uh, teams, the best areas, the best varieties, um, and then identifying uh, all over the process the key variables for the different processes and define uh, of, of, of that agribusiness. In the area of demand and offer alignment, uh, that's probably one of the key points in the agribusiness. So we are working uh, heavily in trying to align, to predict what's going to happen and to make it happen in such a way that we are market focused in the eco to farm to market efficiency. So economic and ecologic uh, market efficiency. We believe there's a huge area for improvement and we are heavily working in that area. But most of the areas where it's economically profitable uh, in the same time is uh, ecologically profitable. So we should uh, go deeper in that area and we are working in many cases for many companies all around the world to help them in those two areas. And as a last point, so I will talk about market intelligence. So it's very important to know where do we sell uh what kind of products do we sell which quality in which calendar uh ranges and basically orienting our production and commercialization efforts uh looking to the market well uh, as a final summary so would say that our intelligentsia that's our leitmotiv is a very promising and sustainable uh, future that will help us and is helping us, uh, all of us, to align offer and demand, to uh, improve uh, traceability and food safety. I'm talking about very rich traceability and food safety, allowing us to send many data to the consumer, to be really transparent and to have a really good uh, full control of the process. Uh, we want to obtain more and better fruits, and this is feasible. The digitalization and analytical intelligence help us in that area. Then improving operational efficiency and productivity, uh, that's something that's a must all over the process. Uh, supply chain integration, that's another uh, important goal. Sustainability and resource efficiency, and at the end of the day, something very important for all kind of uh, companies and organizations focused on the fruits uh, area, that is data-driven culture. So taking decisions based on data and analytics. That's something that for us is uh, key in our activity and we want to help many companies and organizations to go deeper in that data-driven culture. And thank you very much. And I'm at your disposal for any kind of question or interaction. Thank you. Bring in my um, my panel uh, now. Um, all of you are there. I can see you, Naomi, Mustafa, Jose Luis, and and John over there early morning in in California. Um, and and to kind of as I said, in, to to bring this a little bit kind of to the consumer, if we could, or to the market. And Naomi, you started out. Uh, I think it was your first uh, slide of your really interesting presentation talking about climate change and uh, the way in which consumers across the world uh, uh, are marching literally uh, to protest about this thing. And I, and I suspect that many of them, when they go into their local supermarket, look at our products at fruits and vegetables and say, these are the culprits. These are the ones that are causing climate change. And yet it's clear uh, they, they don't look at the meat sector. They don't necessarily think of cereals. And yet I think all the studies show that they're actually the, the chief culprits when it comes to um, issues to do with uh, climate change. And how do we get these, these messages over about the fantastic work that you guys are doing? And I suspect every company uh, worth their salt in the business nowadays to, to consumers. It's a highly complex subject. And yet everybody kind of wants to be reassured that the products they buy are not leading to damaging the planet. Naomi? Yeah, I think it's a really complex question uh, and something that our retail customers have struggled with for quite a long while now. Um, it's difficult for retailers if we're packing own label product to make statements about their environmental impact because as soon as they do one thing, there'll be somebody that criticises them for something else. And it's a rather 
uncomfortable place for them to be in. And alongside our desire to reduce packaging, obviously there's a lot less space now to put any type of story on pack. Um, so it is difficult. We are looking at a few areas and ideas now. We're lucky that we have three of our own brands within the group and we are going to try um, putting some good news stories either through a QR code or something linking to a website where we can educate the customer or put a very simple product logo on a pack, for example, be friendly. I think it is a complex area, understanding climate change science, but consumers understand if it's bee friendly, then that sounds like the growers doing something good. So it's about trying to find the really key simple messages um, that you can put on pack. Um, it's uh, I, I, it's funny. It's it's something actually I discussed in a, in my podcast Fruit Box uh, just a couple of weeks ago with uh, a friend of mine, Mike Port, who runs a banana company in 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 Germany, and they've got a brand called Bee Climate. And there it's all about uh, showing to consumers that by buying bananas, you can actually be con contributing to the reduction or the reverse of, or the, the reverse, the, the, the slowing down, should we say, of climate change. John, if I could come to you, um, these issues about, you know, how you translate all the fantastic work you're doing at Limonera in your orchards to the consumer, is that is that something that you as the director of marketing think about, or is it just not on your radar? Oh, no. No, it's... Uh hugely important. And I think that, uh, you know, consumers, they're overwhelmed, you know, they get a lot of data, you know, there's also with the COVID-19 situation going on, they're not only interested in being healthy and using produce in a healthy way, but also where's their food com coming from? And everybody spoke, I think, uh, several of the speakers talked about food waste. So these issues are key. We have a a program going on now throughout the United States where we're trying to partner with different people in uh, the social media spheres. So we have influencers in all of these cities. This program is going to run throughout the United States through June uh, in different cities with all the major retailers involved and talking about sustainability, food waste, uh, health initiatives, and trying to partner with people and take advantage of the trends. Almost everybody now is living on their phones mm -hmm. and they're also really employing video. And so you're, you're trying to communicate with these very, very overtaxed, uh, stressed shoppers that have limited time and trying to make it as easy as possible for them to get, to do what they want to do, which is to try to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't go, John, because uh, one of the things I, I uh, the, the other question that always bugs me is this, um, is this issue about all this wonderful work that you guys do it costs money. You know, it, 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 it's, it's an expensive business. And yet when I, as a shopper, go into the, to the supermarket, I, I find that actually the citrus I buy has really never been cheaper. And I kind of, I always scratch my head and think, how do they manage to do it? You know, you, you, you have a, a huge amount of cost there. And yet the retail price really doesn't vary. Now, all that work, and I come back to you, John, straight away, that you're doing in the US, does that, that, that's still at the same price at point of sale. I mean, it's not that the, suddenly the prices are going to go higher uh, to deliver a, a, a return to you. Yeah, that's, I mean, there's always going to be margin pressure. And, uh, you know, people, of course, are very, our retailers are very concerned about it. Our food service companies are very concerned about it because there's always pressure. And as you know, the world is changing dramatically, too. The, our retailers are feeling tremendous pressure from, you know, innovative technology like Amazon. I mean, you know, and so they've got to be competitive. So these messages and this work is really helping to create a competitive advantage and also take advantage and tap into what you know consumers are wanting and asking for. So you're hoping that you know you're just trying to do things as efficiently as possible. And the world has changed dramatically with uh, social media. All of these guys and women in the Silicon Valley and around the world are creating amazing tools. So you can look like a Fortune 500 company, you know, sitting in your studio apartment in Chelsea. You know, and if you know what you're doing. And so it's about partnering with other people and just being impactful with messaging and being as efficient. So efficiency is driving things too. 
Mm-hmm. And, and uh, Jose Luis, I, I, I come to you now because um, clearly this efficiency issue is a lot to do with the, the, the new technologies that you're employing. Um, and, and, and so everything in a way is, is, how should I say, is actually going your way. Is it not that, that the opportunities for companies like yours, uh, you must sit there and think, wow, this is great because people are going to use or going to need our type of technology even more. But, but, but is it affordable and is it going to fit with that, that margin issue that, that John has just talked about? Yeah, so for sure, I think that that's a very good question. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the key challenges that we have now is generating a new um, a, new, a new link between consumers and the production side. And with digitalization, with data, not with speech or marketing or whatever, with data, we need to generate a decommoditization of our products explaining why our products are better than, than some other products from the social point of view, from the environmental point of view, from, from the, you know, the sustainability point of view uh, at all kinds of levels. And, you know, we are making today quite a lot of efforts that's, that's fine in reducing our water footprint, in reducing our CO2 footprint, and so on, so on. But the best that we are delivering to the market is a video or is some news talking about some initiatives about, you know, we're planting some trees or we're planting some flowers in our best plots. That is fine. But why don't we measure that? Why don't we put that into data that are flowing up to the consumer in such a way that we can differentiate our products and our consumers are more and more sophisticated and they need, they want more data. They understand what's this thing about CO2 emissions, and they understand what's this thing about depleting uh, water, un- uh, underground water, and this kind of stuff. So let's explain them what's that. Let's give them data. Let's do benchmarking. And that's absolutely key. In that case, it's absolutely key using technology. So it's not enough marketing or some, uh, you know, some singular initiatives that are fine, but not enough. Mm-hmm. I, I want to come to Mustafa in a second, but I just, Naomi, if I could just come to you quickly. Um, this question about uh, translating to this, this to the consumer, I think most consumers um, in most markets, uh, for them, citrus is a product that's traveled from somewhere, you know, unless you live in citrus growing areas, and most of us don't. Um, th- that focus kind of on the, in the consumer mind that I want something local. I want something seasonal. Um, is that a, is that a problem? Do you think for citrus, in as a marketing problem for citrus, or or or, or, or do you exclude it? I think those that are savvy and know about sustainability and perhaps are the more cautious consumers probably know that actually the des- distance travelled isn't the biggest part of the footprint. Um, but I actually think, especially in the UK, most consumers don't think about seasonality and they don't understand it. So I don't think it's um, it's a barrier to selling citrus. I mean, it's not a, considered to be a locally grown product like potatoes mm. or cauliflower or carrots yes. or hot fruits. Um, everybody knows that it's grown outside the UK. So um, I don't think I've come across or heard of that as an obstacle for the citrus industry. And, and, I don't know about the others on the panel, but yeah, we're just coming to a point where you know, before the Christmas uh, holidays, where actually lots of people eat citrus. It's a big time for clementines. It's yeah. a big time for consuming citrus. So there is a kind of understanding of the seasonality. They may not know about the seasons for citrus, but they know the seasons they kind of want to eat citrus. And we heard yeah, definitely earlier, a winter product, more yeah. seen as a winter product. And we heard earlier one of our one of our questioners was asking about how we could grow sales in the summer. But let me bring in in, in Mustafa Zemzani, who's been sitting there very patiently. Uh, Mustafa, you you um, gave a very detailed technical technical presentation. That's your the, the kind of thing that you do each and every day. Um, which you know, I confess, as a layman, I found quite confusing, quite difficult to understand. I understand the broad concepts. Uh, that that question about how you translate some of that wonderful work you're doing in integrated pest management does that stop at the farm gate, or do you think that there's an opportunity to, well, to kind of teach consumers, if you if you will, 
that there are good bugs and bad bugs and we're, we're, we're reducing pesticide usage and we're being very careful in the orchard. Do you, do you, do you see that as a, as a lost opportunity in, in our sector? For the for the first time, I think I have to ask to, you to unmute yourself, uh, <laughs> Mustafa. Can you do that? It's going to be the word of 2020. I I tell you, it's not COVID. It's unmute yourself. Is the uh, you know? You know? Yes, I can hear you now, Mustafa. Please. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, uh, IPM is uh, certainly a good approach, and uh, consumers need to understand that. Uh, this product that comes uh, through uh, this system of production is not only something that the farmer is contributing to. Nature also is contributing because beneficial insects help uh, protect those fruits that are uh, uh, less polluted, if I may say that, uh, with the pesticides. Uh, maybe the, 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 the only side that we have uh, to push uh, in the market is bring people to understand that minor cosmetic defects are actually uh, a positive thing on a fruit. And if it comes to me, uh, I prefer a fruit which is not 100% clean because it has uh, some support for natural life. If uh, a pest can harm it a little bit without harming the internal quality, then uh, it should be regarded as uh, uh, something which is better than uh, a fruit which is fully clean without any uh, uh, cosmetic defects at all. Uh, I hope you are getting my, my message through this. Uh, I, I, absolutely. The other side, the other side of it is, of course, we are looking to cut costs while being uh, positive on the environment. And I can share with you some uh, uh, experience that I, I, I got within uh, my career in farming, uh, in producing citrus, is when you protect nature with beneficial insects, at least for the California red scale, if you do things properly, then uh, the, the, the biological work is being done for at least five years. And it's a huge amount of money that uh, you save, and it's a huge benefit that you bring to uh, nature. Thank you, Mustafa. Well, look, um, the time, I'm afraid the clock is against us, and it means I didn't get the chance to ask John whether a Tesla car comes with every Tesla battery that you have uh, on, on your farm. Your you know, I think everybody that attends the summit really should get a Tesla automobile as part of the package too. And it's Christmas is coming. Okay, John. <laughs> Thank you. I think I think I can hear applause from a thousand two hundred uh, uh, delegates. Uh, none, none of none of uh, the Germans, of course, are applauding because they have a motor car industry that. Uh, uh, relies on uh, us buying their wonderful cars as well. But anyway. Aber wir lieben Deutschland auch. Yeah. That's good to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much, uh, all four of you, for taking part in this very interesting session. Um, uh, we are going to, we are recording all of this, of course. And so uh, for those of you who would like to look back at any of the uh, presentations that have been made now um, and in, in our previous sessions and on the next session, you can relive this whole conference uh, uh, well, uh, soon enough. I think it will be online very, very shortly after the event. But thank you, uh, uh, Naomi, Mustafa, Ozeruis, and John for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.